Camp Galileo Anywhere. I'm Kristen, a Galileo Camp Director, and this is the Galileo Story Corner, where I, where I will be reading books that help reinforce the five innovators' mindsets. These mindsets are something that everyone can have that can help them become an innovator who envisions and creates a better world. Just a reminder that our five mindsets are be visionary, be courageous, be collaborative, be reflective, and be determined. Today, we're gonna to focus on Be Visionary, and I'd like to introduce my co-host and the official mascot of Camp Galileo Anywhere, Feathers Bee, the magical rubber chicken! Hi, hi, hi Feathers Bee, how are you doing? Um, what do you got there? I see some scissors, some tape, some cardboard. Are you working on a project? What's that? Oh, you're building something? That's so cool. What? You're already practicing our mindset of the day. You're being visionary. You're imagining things that don't yet exist and turning those ideas into reality. I'm so impressed. What inspired you to be so visionary today? Oh, oh really? Today's book? Wow, that's so cool. Today's book is The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, and it's written by William Kumquamba and Brian Mueller, and it's illustrated by Elizabeth Zunon. That's so cool, Feathers Bee. I'm really excited to share this book with all of you because it's a true story about a boy who saw a problem in his home and he came up with an idea to fix it, and then he worked really hard to make his ideas a reality. How visionary is that? Let's read all the visionary ideas in the boy who harnessed the wind. In a small village in Malawi, where people had no money for lights, nightfall came quickly and hurried poor farmers to bed. But for William, the darkness was best for dreaming. He dreamed of building things and taking them apart, like the trucks with bottle cap wheels parked under his bed and pieces of radios that he'd crack open and wonder, if I can hear the music, then where is the band? His grandpa's tales of magic also whispered in the pitch black of his room. Witch planes passed through the window while ghost dancers twirled around the room as if a hundred men were inside their bodies. At dawn in the fields, William scanned the maze rows for magical beings then wondered as a truck went rumbled past. How does its engine make it go? Pay attention where you throw that hoe, his father shouted. You'll cut off your foot. Wow, I really like how William is always questioning and wondering and thinking. For all its power over dancers and flying things, magic could not bring the rain. Without water, the sun rose angry each morning and scorched the fields turning the maze into dust. Without food, Malawi began to starve. Soon, William's father gathered the children and said, from now on, we eat only one meal per day, make it last. In the evenings, they sat around the lantern and ate their handful, watching hungry people pass like spirits along the roads. Money also disappeared with the rain. Papani, his father said, I am sorry, you will have to drop out of school. Now William stood on the road and watched the lucky students pass, alone with the monster in his belly and the lump in his throat. For weeks he sulked under the mango tree, until he remembered the library down the road, a gift from the Americans. He found science books filled with brilliant pictures. With his English dictionary close by, William put together how engines moved those big trucks and how radios pulled their music from the sky. But the greatest picture of all was a machine taller than the tallest tree with blades like a fan. A giant pinwheel? Something to catch magic? Slowly he built the sentence. Windmills can produce electricity and pump water. He closed his eyes and saw a windmill outside his home, pulling electricity from the breeze and bringing light to the dark valley. Oh, look at that. William is imagining things that don't yet exist. He saw the machine drawing cool water from the ground, sending it gushing through the thirsty fields, turning the maize tall and green, even when farmers' prayers for rain went unanswered. 
This windmill was more than a machine. It was a weapon to fight hunger. I will build electric wind. In the junkyard, pieces appeared like rusted treasures in the tall grass, a tractor fan, some pipe, and bearings and bolts that required every muscle to remove. Tonga, he'd shout to the birds and spiders holding up his prize. But as William dragged his medals home, people called out, that boy is Masala. Only crazy people play with trash. After many weeks, William arranged his pieces in the dirt, a broken bicycle, rusted bottle caps and plastic pipe, even a small generator that powered a headlight on a bike. For three days, he bolted, banged and tinkered while chickens squawked and dogs barked, and neighbors shook their heads saying, what's Masala doing now? Look, he's building. He's definitely being visionary. He's using lots of different materials to try to make his vision a reality. His cousin Jeffrey and his best friend Gilbert soon appeared. Can we help with the electric wind? Grab your pungas and follow me, he said, and took them into the forest. Together, they swung their sharp blades into the trunks of the blue gum trees, then hammered them together to make the tower. Standing atop, William shouted, Bring it up! while the boys tugged and heaved. A crowd gathered below and gazed at this strange machine that now leaned and wobbled like a clumsy giraffe. Some giggled, others teased, but William waited for the wind. Like always it came. First a breeze, then a gusting gale. The tower swayed and the blades spun round. Ooh, look at all that wind turning the windmill that William built. Wow. With sore hands once slowed by hunger and darkness, William connected wires to a small bulb, which flickered at first, then surged as bright as the sun. Tonga, he shouted, I have made electric wind. Wow, look how proud he is. Well done, a man yelled as the doubters clapped and cheered. William knew he had just begun. Light could not fill empty bellies, but another windmill could soak the dry ground, creating food where once there was none. Electric wind can feed my country, William thought. Mm, look at that. I can see in his eyes he has more ideas, more visionary plans. And that was the strongest magic of all. Wow, look at all the windmills. And look how they're all different, too, even in the picture. The end. What was your favorite part, Feathersby? Oh, wow! Feathersby! What a cool windmill! Is that what you made with your cardboard and tape? Wow, you really were inspired by our book today. That's so cool. Well, my favorite part in the book was how William really believed that it was his place to make his ideas a reality. He knew that there was a problem and he didn't sit around and wait for someone else to fix it. He saw himself as an actor in the world and he went about to go and change it. I love that. I bet that you have seen some things that you would like changed at home. Can you identify a challenge that you face at home and come up with a visionary way to overcome that challenge? I bet you can. Hey, Feathersby, what are you gonna use your windmill for? Uh, like in the story, William used his windmill to help his family and community overcome the famine that was hurting them. What, what's yours gonna be for? Oh, okay, yeah. Feathersby says that she wants to use her windmill to help churn ice cream. You, you really like ice cream, huh, Feathersby? <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna see if we can help Feathersby turn her ideas into reality and get some ice cream made. Thanks for joining me in Camp Galileo Story Corner. Hope to see you soon. Stay visionary and keep on innovating. Bye. Say bye, Feathersby. Bye.